The next subject of the types of sermons is counseling type. Um, J. Adams um, wrote a book on nutetic counseling. And um, he has uh, applied that to preaching. Nutetic means coming on the side of the person and helping them, or helping people to see their problems and giving them an answer to this problem. And uh, I think it's worth the while to look at his uh, definition and his use of uh, this type of preaching. Now, I have uh, the idea is to help to change Christian behavior. Now, I have gone to... Uh, Dr. Cho, who pastors the largest church in the world in Korea, uh, to draw his example. Uh, as an example, I have chosen him because it appears to me this is the type of preaching he does, and also he has a great influence uh, on the Pentecostals around the world. Now, the context of his situation is poor Buddhist people who has a fatalistic view of life. And so, in that context, he, uh, some people would say he's preaching the prosperity gospel. He would say not. He would say he's addressing the needs of people by counseling them in his preaching. And, uh, and so he would have, met, I have, when in his, his analysis of his sermons, he has sermons on uh, how to be healed, how to walk in forgiveness, not guilt, how to be charitable, a charitable Christian in a non-Christian country, how to think positively. And um, his sermon seeks to counsel people and address the needs that are present. And um, uh, let me highlight a few things before I give you an example of his sermon. First, uh, he spends an hour, uh, an average of four hours of prayer daily. Secondly, uh, he might be perceived by uh, white, uh, the white church in North America, as preaching the prosperity gospel. Uh, his theological emphasis is different uh, from the full gospel message. He adds that God wants you to prosper. And um, just to draw the point, uh, South Korea has nothing in terms of natural resources, but today they are the 14th largest economy in the world. And he has hundreds of, of millionaires that attend his church. So we know that his preaching has worked. Fourth, fourthly, his sermon are practical, rev relevant, and biblical. Fifthly, he, and he uses practical illustrations. And um, let me give you an example of... Uh, one of his sermons. He, he is speaking from Second Corinthians 
5.17 If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. His first point is, many people have a bad self-portrait. Secondly, we have to think about how we can change our bad self-portrait. And thirdly, we can live in this new portrait Christ has given us. What he is counseling people to do is to change their outlook in life. And as the scripture says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. What I am trying to pinpoint here is that this sermon counsels uh, the audience and it is Christocentric. And to me, as I said, being Christocentric is most important. The other type of sermon that I would like to draw to your attention that a lot of Pentecostals preach is, um, I would call it, need-centered types of sermon or topical type of sermon. And by need-centered sermon, I mean that we are preaching about people's needs, specific needs that exist in a congregation or community. So, um, if there is a tragedy in a country or geographical area, depending on uh, the size of the country, what type of sermon would we preach? Would we preach on God's judgment? Or would we try to comfort the people that is in the audience? My suggestion is that we should comfort people in the audience. So, um, in a need-centered type of sermon, we are trying to deal with the needs that people have. For example, if people are worried or stressed, or the family is not functioning uh, properly, it would be futile to speak about um, Joshua, the life of Joshua. It will be more practical to deal with the issues at hand. If it's worry or family structure, the wise pastor will try and address that particular need in the audience. For example, also, if uh, you are dealing with um, uh, stress, or there is a big celebration, we have several things that we celebrate in our Christian calendar. Easter, Christmas, Mother's Day, Father's Day, some places they have um, they have uh, uh, a family day. It would be wise for us to speak on those specific days to use this as a catalyst to speak to the people we are addressing. For example, if you are speaking in our wedding, would you talk about Christmas? No. You want to speak to the need at hand and encourage the people uh, concerning marriage and the home. So, need is basically speaking to the needs. And again, I mention, keep the sermon Christ centric. The last type of sermon that I would like to bring to your attention is allegorical type of sermon. Allegorical type of sermon uh, is taking the spiritual meaning of the text and saying the literal meaning is not the true meaning of the text. 
this type of preaching existed in the church uh, for a thousand years and uh, responded to Philo's philosophical, philosophical method of allegorical speech and they started responding for, to that dominant philosophy and allegorizing the scripture. Bernard of, Slavo, uh, Bernard of Claveau is probably the best of the allegorical preachers in that he stuck to a particular text Here is a particular example. Is the book of Solomon about Christ or is it about marriage and the home? Here is a typical allegorical interpretation of, uh, of the book of Solomon. Christ is the groom and his church the bride. God the groom and the soul of the Christian is saved. Christ, the King of Heaven, and His mother, Mary, Queen of Heaven. Now, there is a better way to preach today, and that is to preach the text as it is and make it applicable to the audience. Another way of allegorizing scripture is to use the symbolic use of scripture. So, for example, light in the Bible speaks about Jesus. So, it is also a symbol. And so, I would come to that later on. The important thing is that we only see once in the New Testament, that um, a, um, twice, in fact, in the New Testament of allegorical preaching. And one of my friends said that one of the allegorical use of Scripture in the New Testament has a historical context, and he thinks then in his mind that there is only one use of allegorical scripture. The New Testament writers did not allegorize scripture. Jesus didn't allegorize scripture. Scripture was taken for what it's worth. Now, concerning specifically the book of the Songs of Solomon, it is not talking about Jesus. Jewish tradition tells us that it is talking about um, the family, the marriage, and the home. And only adults were allowed to read the scripture and this particular book. So God is interested in our intimate affairs with our mates. And that's how he created us. I know of only one pastor who have uh, preached through the book of uh, the Songs of Solomon and uh, made it um, apply to uh, families and, and uh, our uh, significant other. So I discourage you from preaching allegorical sermons. I'll give you a better method when we talk about uh, outlining sermons. In conclusion then, my suggestion is try and preach expository sermons by going through a book of the Bible. Try and preach on topics, on subjects, and for sure if you have a healing and deliverance service, address that particular situation by dealing with the subject 
of speaking about miracles, signs, wonders, and what God can do today. God bless you.